Hi there. In uh, this video, I am uh, going to talk about how to measure performance, which is something which is uh, quite important. I guess uh, as uh, flight sim enthusiasts, the performance is uh, a core aspect of uh, simming. And uh, of course, there are several ways to measure performance. The way I uh, do it is that I use a couple of uh, apps to bring up an uh, overlay showing uh, a lot of uh, useful uh, values, of course, uh, including uh, frames per second, but also frame time, which is uh, quite important in terms of smoothness. If you think about performance, I think it's uh, two main components. One is, of course, uh, frames per second, which is uh, important. But uh, I think even more important is uh, the frame time consistency. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what that is and how to measure it. So the first app that I'm using is uh, MSI Afterburner. And uh, that includes a lot of uh, different sensors. These uh, sensors might be uh, GPU and CPU load and uh, different temperatures and uh, memory load and so on. The overlay might uh, look a little bit different uh, depending on uh, what sort of skin that you're using. So let's go to the settings menu. Then I just want to bring your attention to the user interface here. And then it's possible to change the overlay. This is just a random one that I chose. I think it's uh, relatively nice and uh, tidy. Then we are going to go to on-screen display. And then we are going to go to monitoring. And uh, this is where you pick the different uh, sensors. Before we continue with this, I'm just going to uh, start the sim here. So on the last flight I did was in the Inibuilds uh, A330. From uh, Dublin over to uh, Boston. So I'll just uh, choose the delivery here. Hopefully I do have delivery. I'm not entirely convinced that I do have delivery. I think, uh, in fact, this uh, delivery confusion confusion i was going to say could i mean confusion because i'm a little bit confused about how to do this uh you can see here it's a little bit messy so i wanted to choose the air lingus uh, livery not really sure if we have it but uh fingers crossed yeah it's not possible to see so we are going to go to dublin just to have some fun testing the performance. And we're going to put the time back a little bit. It's getting dark in uh, Europe. So coming back here, we can see in uh, MSI Afterburner under the monitoring tab that we can choose a lot of different uh, sensors. At the moment, I've selected GPU temperature, GPU usage, memory usage, and memory usage by process, which is the active application, which is uh, the SIM, usually. So what we see here is that uh, if you select this one here, the sensor is actually active, so that it is recording continuously the GPU temperature. All right, looks like we got the correct livery and uh, we are on the runway. Let's just go into drone view here. Some looming uh, clouds here earlier today with the default historical weather. And then I'm just going to start uh, beyond ATC. to add some AI traffic. Here we go. 
and then we'll go back to MSI Afterburner. So if you select this one here, the sensor is active. It uh, does not mean that it is uh, available in the on-screen display though. So to explain this, you need another app which is called Viva Tuner Statistics Server. I'll leave a link in the description where you can download both uh, RTSS, this one here, and uh, MSI Afterburner. All right, so I have a few values here. I have the GPU temperature and the GPU load. So if I uh, deselect this one here, showing on screen display for GPU temperature and apply, that value disappears. So it's quite easy to choose the different uh, sensor data that you want to display the RTSS uh, performance overlay. You can see I have the uh, GPU memory usage in total, and also the GPU VRAM used by the SIM. So the total VRAM used for my, uh, by my system is about 20 gigabytes, and by the SIM is about 15.2 gigabytes. So a lot of options here. I have the CPU temperature, CPU usage, and then I have the total uh, system RAM usage, which at the moment is 41 gigabytes. I do have uh, 64 gigabytes of uh, RAM, and uh, I'll tell you that uh, MSFS 2024 will pretty much use as much uh, RAM as uh, it can eat. The second one is the RAM actually used by the SIM, which currently is uh, 23 gigabytes. Then I have the frame rate. Then I have the frame time with both the number and the graph. So the frame time graph is quite important uh, to me. My goal is to have a relatively flat frame time graph. That means that uh, it is uh, good frame time consistency, which uh, correlates well with uh, smoothness. If you have a lot of spikes on the frame time graph here, a lot of frame time spikes, you will probably uh, experience some uh, stutters. So to select the graph, you simply just uh, select the graph here. And then that's pretty much all the uh, sensors that I use at the moment with the MSI. So let's now talk a little bit about uh, Viva Tuner Statistics uh, Server. So I use uh, RTSS for two things. One is, of course, the performance overlay. The other thing is to lock the uh, frame rate. As we can see here, I've set the frame rate limit to 62 FPS. I'm uh, running a frame generation. And uh, my goal is to have a uh, native frame rate above 30 FPS, which is 60 uh, FPS with frame gen. So I just uh, chose the uh, frame rate limit of 62, which means that I try to tune everything so that uh, my FPS stays at the value of 62 most of the time. So why do I lock the FPS? We can start with that. Uh, the reason is that uh, if I lock FPS, I get a very, very good frame time consistency. We can see that uh, now that the sim is in the focus, and frame gen is uh, active. The frame time graph here, here is pretty much uh, flat, which means it is 100% uh, smooth, no stutters. If I unlock it using the hotkey, we can see that the frame time graph is a little bit more uneven. You might see uh, some spikes, but uh, 
overall this is pretty good so rule of thumb is uh locking the fps will uh, actually make the sim a little bit more smooth also it uh, will uh, use uh, less uh, cpu and uh, gpu resources there are a few ways to lock uh, fps using uh, rtss we'll go to the setup here And we are going to scroll down to enable frame rate limiter. And we can see here that uh, I've chosen front edge sync. Now, for some reason, uh, this, uh, this option provides um, a bit more smoothness than the other options. So, this is what I recommend. It's uh, also, of course, possible to lock the frames or to cap the frames using. Uh, NVIDIA control panel. I get better results by using uh, RTSS in front edge sync. There's a few other options. So we, if we go over to plugins here, you can see that we have something called hotkey handler. Make sure that this one is uh, enabled. Then we're going to double click it. Then we can see that I have two hotkeys using num9 to toggle the on screen display. And I'm using num6 to toggle the frame rate limiter. So num9 is a very nice and easy hotkey to uh, toggle the on screen display. And num6 is to toggle the frame rate uh, limiter. So when I let the frames run uh, freely, you can see that uh, it's about 70 something. Then I lock it and it goes back to 62. There's a few other options. You can uh, move around this one here. So you can uh, pretty much uh, put it uh, where you like and you can also increase the zoom if you want. And also, if you go to the setup menu and then the user interface, you can change the transparency of the uh, interface here. And also the scaling. So that's uh, pretty much it for RTSS. It's so about RTSS and uh, MSI Afterburner are very, very powerful uh, apps when used in a combination. Then the last app that I'm using uh, is CapFrame X. And uh, that is to record a session so that we can measure different uh, performance related values over time in the sim. It's a freeware app. It is uh, quite easy to use. So in the uh, opening window here, we're under the capture tab. We're going to select MSFS 2024. Then we're going to go to overlay, the overlay tab. And we can see that I have some uh, items selected. The capture timer, got real time 1% low FPS, and real time 0.2% low FPS. Very, very useful. And I have a few other values as well. So, if we minimize this, we can see that now we have a lot of different uh, information here. So the average FPS is uh, currently about 60, probably increasing since uh, frame gen was uh, inactive for a little while as we uh, had the uh, CapFrame X uh, window uh, active. 
And then now that I've locked FPS, we can see that the 1% low is the same as the average FPS, is, uh, which is a very good uh, result. Even the 0.2% low is very, very close to the target frame rate or the locked frame rate. And then I just have a few values here for the uh, CPU uh, load. Of course, the uh, big advantage of uh, using CapFrame X is that you can uh, run a capture session. And I have a NumPad 2 as the hotkey to start the uh, session. That means that uh, CapFrame X will record for a while until you stop the recording, and then it will record uh, several useful uh, values like the average FPS and the average 1% uh, low FPS and so on. It will also record some sensors. So I've selected the uh, CPU total load and the max load and CPU package temperature, CPU core, I mean GPU temperature and uh, GPU uh, core temperature, GPU core clock, and uh, so on. And all these uh, sensor data will be uh, included in the report. So we're just going to make sure that uh, the sim is uh, selected. Then we're going to use the NumPad 2 hotkey. To start the session. And we can easily bring up the overlay again by uh, hitting Alt-O. Now we can see that the capture has been running for about 15 seconds. And we're just going to run it for about uh, one minute. So almost one minute, so I'm going to hit uh, NumLog2, which is apparently uh, assigned to something else in the sim, unfortunately. And then we're going to have a look at the result. So we can see here that we get a frame time graph. It's also possible to see the FPS graph, which is uh, kind of just a flat line because I got my uh, FPS locked to 62. The frame times is a little bit more interesting. Remember that I said that uh, if you have a lot of spikes on the frame time graph, you might get a little bit of stutters. But if we have a look at the y axis here, it's only going from uh, about 15.9 over to 16.4, which is a very, very narrow range. We can see the biggest spike here went up to about 16.36 or something. But most of the uh, frame rate values stayed pretty much within 0 0.1 of 16.1, which is a very, very good result. So this is a goal that I have is that uh, the frame time graph is uh, as flat as possible, which uh, means that the sim is smooth. Uh, if we have a look here, we can see that the average FPS is 62, and pretty much all the values here are 62, or pretty much close to 62. So this is uh, quite an excellent uh, result. Another uh, measure here is uh, frame time variances. The most important one is the time difference between two consecutive frame time values below two milliseconds. And all the frame times have less than a two millisecond difference, which is excellent. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. A short video uh, talking about uh, how to measure performance in the sim. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment. And uh, thank you everyone for watching. Until next time, take care.